So number 15 then from paper two of the 2021 Higher Maths, it wasn't, so it's the resource paper, it's part B. So it's the logs and the circles, it's circles again for question 15. It's just a little four mark question on finding the points of intersection of a line and a circle. You've got a diagram here and the only reason for having the diagram would be so you can identify the points. Yet in the marking scheme, there's no mention of identifying which one was P and which one was Q. In which case the diagram's got no relevance at all then. But I suppose that's just because it was a reduced marking scheme. Because it wasn't a real exam after all, was it? But anyway, for four marks, find the points of intersection. Well, oh, this is, I mean, this has got nothing to do with it. But just, I've drawn this circle going through the origin. It's just something you spot sometimes. If a circle goes through the origin, that means the origin fits the equation. So if you put zero for x and zero for y, the whole equation should come to zero. Well, that doesn't. If you've got a number at the end, you know it doesn't go through the origin. But that's by the by, because you're not really using the diagram anyway, apart from identifying P and Q. So the question was, find the points of intersection. Well, those will be simultaneous equations. At the points of intersection, that's the set of points that satisfy both equations at the same time. Simultaneous equations. So I'll give them names, one and two. Now, you may well just say y equals y, but it won't always be y equals y. That just depends if it's nice and convenient for it to be y equals y. In this case, it is, because y is equal to this nice little neat expression here, just with integers in it. If instead of that, that equation had been something like 3y is 4 minus x, that would have been a pest, because you'd have to rearrange it to read y equals, and then it'd be full of thirds. In a case like that, you would rearrange it to read x equals and x would be the better substitution. I would still have called that my equation 1, but you'd have to then say x equals x. But anyway, y equals y works here. So substitute 1 and 2, that's the way I set it out. Substitute 1 in 2, meaning I write out equation 2, and wherever I spot y in it, within that, I use this substitution to replace it. So I write down equation 2, so x squared plus, oh, here's a y, don't put it down, put this instead, 4 minus 2x squared minus 10x, whoops, not minus, there's minus, I mean not plus, 8y again, 4 minus 2x, and then plus 1 equals 0. Now doing that, carrying out the substitution, gives you the first mark. Now you're just going to have to multiply that lot out. So x squared plus, right, Square a bracket, square the first, square the last, in the middle, twice the product, square the first, 16, minus, twice the product, 8 doubled, 16x, square the last, and it's always positive, careful of that, 4x squared, nothing happens here, minus 32, minus, minus, plus, 8 twos are 16x, plus the 1 equals 0. No marks for that, no marks until you've tidied it all up. Right, this is what you hope it's all going to turn out nice. They'll have a common factor to make your factorisation simpler. So x squares, there's only two of them, five. Well, that set the bar, if you like. I'm hoping I'll get multiples of five. Right, x is next. Uh, there, there. Oh, look, they cancel out, so it's a minus ten. So far, so good. Multiples of five. Now the numbers. I've got a sixteen. I've got a thirty-two. So that's a minus sixteen plus one up to minus fifteen. There we are. Multiples of five. That's the second mark. Now, factorise it. We'll take that 5 out. Actually, taking that 5, we'll, we'll just take it out. It could actually just go because I don't need it anymore. It's not as if I'm going to use this in one of those differentiation questions where I'm going to make up a table and then evaluate the value of the derivative, in which case the 5 needs to be there because it's part of the evaluation. Even more importantly, if it was a negative, but here it serves no purpose. You could just divide both sides out. But sometimes they're funny in the higher, so I'll just I'll leave it sitting there, uselessly sitting at the side. Minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. So that could have just gone. That's what you sh should have done. I'll put it in again. 5 times... And it must be x times x. It must be 1 times 3. And to get a negative in the middle, I'll have to make the larger one negative. So that'll be plus... So here I've got my two answers. Either x is negative 1, so that'll be the further back one, q. I'll leave a space because it's still to work out the y's. Or x equals 3.
you know, that's worth a mark. And then there'll be a mark for putting them in and finding the Y coordinates. So I'm going to put them into one, which you should do, but you could put them into either, because remember what you've done is you found the points that belong on them both. So putting that into one would read four minus two times whatever. Four minus two times negative one. I'll do this at the same time. Four minus two times three. So it's four plus two is six, and it's four minus six, which is negative two. Now, here they've just given that the mark, but really you should be finishing it off by saying this then. Well, that must be the Q. So Q is the point negative one, six, and that must be with three, the P. So P is the point three, negative two, and that should be the mark.